by doing just a couple of steps just a few days a week on eBay, we've been able to keep our sales booming. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about sales and what specifically we have been doing that's keeping our sales rolling right along. This month we thought was going to be bad after the changeover on October 12th when they changed over the setup for searches and your items when item specifics became necessary in a ton more categories. Sales plummeted for a ton of people since the 28th and we're doing self-similar and we've also altered our schedule for how we are doing sales from this point going forward. Now I'm going to show you our schedule and we've got it set up one specific way and we just do that for every single week and it's been doing just fine for us. Our sales right now are still about tied right now with our best month ever. So things are rolling and stuff is still selling very well for us. Now I know that may not be everybody's take on this, but this is what's been working for us. So this right up here is our schedule. We are doing this week after week after week from this point going forward. We've tested this week after week as well to see what works best. Starting Monday morning, we do 1 15th of our store as South Similar. Now, where did I come up with that number? Basically, what I'm doing is I'm not doing sales similar while my sales are running. At the same time, I'm going to be running a sale. So right after that, once I do the sales similar, I'm going to run a sale as well. That way, I'm not doing sales similar on items that are on sale. If you do this constantly, every single week like this, it keeps everything rolling in from what I have personally seen. So on Monday mornings, all the sales should have ended real early prior to me having to worry about setting up the sales similar. These are sales that were run from the weekend. As we'll go through, I'll show you. So now on Tuesday, I don't have to do anything. I've already got a sale running. I've already done some sales similar. The sales similar, when you do it, it doesn't instantly drop off or anything like that. You've got two or three days that sales similar keeps being in the main center point of new items being listed when you do that. So I'm riding off the tails of sales similar from the day before on Tuesday. Now come Wednesday, that two day sale I started on Monday is gone. It's already ended early in the morning. So then I'll go ahead and do 1 15th of my store again as sales similar, and then I'll run the sales again for two more days. Now where am I getting the 1 15th? That's 2 30ths of what I have up. Since my sale runs for two days, I'm doing all of my sales similars the day the sale starts. That way I don't have to mess with them. I was originally planning on doing 1 30th of my store every day of the month, so every month it would be all done. It's still being done every month. Every one of my listings is being refreshed every single month, but along with that, I'm splitting up how I do it. It does save some time. Doing this on a constant basis every day of the week can be monotonous. It can take up a lot of time. Doing this every single day of the week, a thousand here, a thousand there, and worrying about the sales going back and forth, you're eventually going to run into some issues with eBay when items are on sale and sell similar is going to possibly lower your value on the items to what they were done at a sale. So at this point, I don't mess with that. I run the sell similar prior to starting the sale over. Running a sale for a very short period of time is a big boost because it states, hey, these items are now on sale the day you start it. The day it ends, it also announces, hey, this sale ends shortly. You better jump on it before the sale price is gone. So with the sale similar and the sale at the same time, our sales have been just booming, just coming in left and right. So I'm very happy with what's going on with doing it this way. Now come Friday. I run a three-day sale starting on Friday. It ends early Monday morning. So when I'm starting off on Monday morning to do sell similar, this sale has ended already. I'm starting it real early in the morning. You can set it up however you want. You can do it any specific time. But if you do it right, you set it up right, you plan this out as you're doing it, you can do the sell similar when nothing is running, no sales are active. You can have a, an hour or so time frame in there. So you can readily do it and handle it without having to worry about wasting extra time on it. So come Friday, I'm doing one-tenth of our store is going to be done as sell similar in the morning. That's three days equivalent of me doing one-thirtieth of my store for three days. That's basically where that comes from. So instead of me doing one-thirtieth of my store every day of the week, I'm only doing it three 
days of the week and I'm still selling similar of all the same amount of items. I'm still basically, since we have around 30,000 items, I am still doing 7,000 items that sell similar every single week, but I only have to mess with them three times. Same thing with the sale. I figured I can do them on the very same day, so there's no crossing them over. So I'm not running self-similar on items that I already had on sale. I've had people report that there have been some issues with which prices actually show up when you do a self-similar that way. So this has alleviated all of those issues with this one here. Simple, it's easy. I follow this week after week after week going forward. If for some reason in the future it does not work, I will switch it up and see what else I can do. Now, this doesn't mean that I'm not listing new items. It doesn't mean that I'm not addressing some of the item specifics that are recommended. I'm still popping those in, but at my leisure. I can do those anytime. None of those issues are date sensitive, time sensitive, or anything. But I do honestly feel setting up the sales and sell similar specifically like this is a big plus. Now, time is always a factor. I never want to waste any more time than I have to doing anything. If I do a bunch together, it's already set up, I'm already in the right place. So sell similar is more beneficial for me to do a couple days worth at a time. I'm not worrying about it every day either that way. Got the schedule, I follow it, and I do it at the same time every single day. So everything ends at the same time. I can restart stuff at the same times. I can do the sell similar where nothing else is interacting with it at all. Now to do the sell similar or to do a sale, I have a couple videos linked down below. You can just check out those videos depending on what you want to do. I'll have it down in the description box for you so you can just click on whichever one you're not sure on. From the marketing tab in the hub, you can easily set up a sales and markdown in just a few minutes. You can do 10,000 items in that sale and you can do them across many different categories. Now if you've done the sale already, you can just copy it again and keep reusing it over and over and over again. When you sell some of those items too from the sale and you do a copy like that, it will fill in the extra spaces with new items you may have listed. There's a couple options. Again, watch the video for that one as well as the same thing for sell similar. I show you easily how to do sell similar in bulk, a couple hundred at a time. It just takes a few more moments as well. Now, I don't do any promoted listings at all, so these are the options that I play with that do help me out. Instead of doing the promoted listings, this was our option. This does work, as I said. Now, you may have good results with promoted listings. I have not. In vintage and collectibles, most of the time, you just have to have the right person on at any given time for your items to sell. The right person just has to see them. That is all it really takes with a lot of the items that we sell. It's not like a shirt that there could be a couple hundred thousand people looking for. It's not like a pair of shoes that they make a million of a year or anything else like that. We're talking most of our items that we share with everyone are one-offs or unique items or vintage where no one's making new ones of them. There's hardly any other seller that would have most of the items that we have up because they are unique to some extent across the board. So most of the promoted options that eBay offers, I wouldn't recommend for those types of items. Now, if you've got you know wholesale account, you've got mass quantity of the same types of items, the pay-per-click option could actually do you okay. We've done similar options on Amazon and things like that to push traffic to a store, and it did work. We did get some sales. It was worth the time. We had a bigger profit because of it. The cost of paying for that type of promotion was well worth it. So it can work in some cases, but in my case, it's just not feasible. It's not practical, especially with us doing sales similar and doing the sales constantly. If we always are running a sale, there's always something going on. As well, the sales, all these other aspects I do, the biggest push, the biggest thing I want out of this is to have the watchers so I can send out offers to watchers. The vast majority of what we actually sell comes from offers to watchers. The second biggest group comes from, obviously, offers from people that just sent them out on their own. So those are the two biggest pushes for us. So if you know your items, you know the types of clientele you need from it, this type of thing can do you wonders. I've probably had close to a thousand people actually say that this sort of thing has worked for them. The self similar as well as running these sales. So try it yourself. If it doesn't work, don't do it again. If it works, obviously you want to continue doing something like that. That's why we set this up the way I have it, where it's going to be a routine week after week after week. It's just going to be an autopilot on this, and we can just move on to doing other tasks from this point on. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends.
Which of you Imagic experts has created the toughest game for Atari's video system? Oh, me. Me. Demon attack! Tough! Move over, fire breath. You not good enough for demon attack! You in big trouble! I'm winning! Good work, Voltar. Demon attack really is tough. Imagic's demon attack. Tough. In television version, coming soon.